Howdy, y'all. It's Stefan Satani here from the Comedy Advice Podcast. And I am here to let the foliage of this episode just fall gently upon you. The breeze and gusts of gentle wind will spread these leaves all over your face and body and allow for prime pictures of the fall episodes that a comedy advice podcast has to offer and this one has a little pumpkin spice in it and the little pumpkin of this episode is my special guest steve ranazizi he is a comedian he has two specials out on comedy central man child and breaking dad and he also you may have seen him on the league he was kevin MacArthur, and he was the league commissioner hilarious individual and i had such a delightful time speaking with him. And guess what? If you guys are like, hey, I can't get enough of this little pumpkin, you can get more. That's right. You can go, if you're in Phoenix, you can go and see him live at Stand Up Live or CB Live. He's going to be playing three nights this weekend. Link is going to be in the show notes. And if you're in other parts of the country and you're like, oh, I want to go. Well, you can't unless you fly, but he has other tour dates. You can just go to steveranazizi.com and you can see all the tour dates he has. I think he's going to be in Washington after Arizona and a couple other places too. So be sure to check it out so you don't miss the Ranazis. Okay. Please don't tell him that I called him that. Anyway, guys, I also am doing splendid. Thank you for asking. I hope you guys are doing well. I am making some changes to the studio. My wife ultimately is making changes to the studio. So this side that you guys cannot see, it looks so good. The side that you can see, it. it, my wife tore down all the sand panels, sound panels. I don't know, maybe that's my Arizona accent coming out. So it's all bare, but you know, you as a phoenix, you must become ashes before you rise from them. And so that's kind of what I'm doing. So this new studio, it's looking great. So far, the phoenix has started to flutter its wings, but the legs aren't fully formed. They're still ash. So that's why this side is a little bit under construction. But I'm really excited for what it's about to be. And that's what life is all about, right? Growth and just the journey. So I hope whatever journey you're on, if you're at a bad job and you're like, man, I just wish I could quit right now. Just take a deep breath. Hold on. Just think right now. I'm renovating my soul and part of it doesn't look great yet, but this job is going to give me enough money to be able to pay those bills and be able to grind on my own time and be able to get that job that I always dreamed of. So I know that was really specific to corporate life, but you know, that's what I'm here for. Just picking out one of you guys and trying to reach you while the others just sit in with glazed eyes. Hmm glazed eyes. I wonder if that's a delicacy somewhere in some country. It probably is probably, probably France. Cause they eat snails. So they probably eat glazed eyes too. They have a cool name for it. Like, uh, also I am super excited. My wife and I, we ended up going to at home. I wasn't excited about that part, but we ended up getting a large canvas, a large painting that we put in our living room and Oh boy, has it changed the whole thing. I now realize what it's like to be an adult. Being an adult is looking at a painting that you bought and being like, man, gosh darn, does that really tie the room together? And I really feel it does. If you guys want to come over later, you guys can see it and marinate in the beauty of my living room. Chef's kiss. It's just so good. And you know what else is so good? You guys. If this is your first time listening, welcome. I've got a beautiful backlog of episodes. So if you enjoyed this one, you can go back. I've got Pete Lee on a recent episode. He was the first comedian to have a standing ovation on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. We talk a little bit about that. Ali Sadiq, who's one of the best storytellers. He's got like three appearances on This Is Not Happening on Comedy Central with Ari Shafir. And man, so many more. Lisa Lampanelli who is the queen of mean or was the queen of mean. She took off her crown and became not mean, maybe kind of mean, but she doesn't really roast anymore, but she's awesome. I went to go see her live and she was incredible. One of the best comedians I've ever seen. And I had her on the podcast because she was so gracious to 
grace me with her presence. So if you guys like this, you can go and backlog that. Or if this is the first, second, third, fourth time, and you want to listen to it again, I won't be mad. I'll be glad. I'll be overjoyed. So just go on and do that. You can't get enough Steph, as the doctors always say. Other than that, I just wanted to encourage you, if you haven't yet, subscribe, leave a review. If you have not yet on Apple Podcasts, I'll have a link in the show notes. Even if you don't listen there, just leave a review. You can roast me, do whatever you want. I'm going to read one. This is a recent one. It says six stars. That's not even possible. I don't want to tell them. They say six stars. I recommend this podcast to anyone who needs any kind of advice. I mean, any advice. This covers it all and then some. It will improve your life, your career, and your sense of humor. Learn, laugh, love, as they say. I enjoyed this thoroughly, so I know you will. Aw, how sweet. Thank you, Trivia Grind. That was Trivia Grind. Really appreciate that. It's a little boring. You know, maybe next time you can judge it up. This is all constructive criticism, obviously. But, uh, you know, do better because that one kind of sucked. So thank you to everybody that's left a review. I'll read another one next week. So hopefully it's yours. If you leave a good one. Well, now that I've shit on all of you, come see me live. I've got two new shows at the House of Comedy. It's Trash or Treasure. I've got one on October 19th and then another one on 11, <laughs> 9. So that's how I just rotate through numbers and months. So one on October 19th, the other one on November 9th. They're both Trash or Treasure shows with me and Lamar Mitchell JR. And we get together, we bring on a champion team of comedians. And then two of them each round have to battle it out over certain topics, whether they're trash or treasure. It's a lot of improv. It's a lot of fun. And it's interactive. The audience actually gets to vote whether that thing is trash or treasure. We had an amazing time, except for the losers. They get to, they get kicked out and they can't, they have to pay for everyone's drinks. That's the punishment. They accepted it. So, you know, they, that's what they signed up for. Anyway, I'll put a link in the show notes for that. So come see me live if you can. And yeah, thank you for all the support. You guys have been a picnic basket of delight. I just keep opening it up and I don't expect to find the things that I do. And then I see a good job or I see a, you know, kind of crummy review, but it's still five stars. So that's great. But all these things you guys are doing are building me up. And so you're, you're getting like a great wall of Steph and Satani and just one brick at a time. You guys are making me into something amazing that you can walk all over and take pictures of. So I think it's like a win-win for all of us. And I just wanted to say thank you, mucho, grazie mille, e obrigado. Those are the only languages I speak. I don't know if you know, I speak Italian and Brazilian Portuguese. A lot of my listeners don't know that. Anyway, I'm going to let you guys get to the meaty part of the episode in three, two, uno, zero. Hello. Hey, Steve, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Happy Thursday. Yeah, you, you too. Uh, um, just want to make sure you can see me and hear me. Everything's good. Yeah, everything's good. I love the Jurassic Park background, too. It's, it looks like you're still at Ari's place. Uh, no, I wish. Uh, no, this is uh, my house, but we're moving in the process of moving to a new house. So uh, this is the basement. When the kids were real little, we had a whole Jurassic Park theme down here. There's a lot of dinosaurs on the wall. So this is uh, this is the most fun place right now to do the podcast or any sort of podcast. I love it. Sparing no expense, um, just like John Hammond. Yeah, yeah. I could feed <laughs> him. Right. Oh, wait. Let me. Get... There you go. See? I train them well. It doesn't even bite me. Look at that. Oh, my Stupid. gosh. That's phenomenal. I fucking poke <laughs> it. And it doesn't even move. <laughs> Look at this stupid fucking. You know why they died? Because they're idiots. <laughs> sorry dude it's early for you you're on the west coast you're up at 8 a.m i do wake up relatively early my wife she starts work at 5 30 so she sets the alarm for 5 25 she sets it on my side of the bed so that i can wake her up so i end up just up and at them isn't so. that the best the passive aggressive wake up calls and if you said something i, I mean i don't want to presumptu about your uh, your relationship but if, but if you said something like hey you know what can you just say, like like why you always did like is it does it bother you why are you making this a big deal now it's like no it's always bothered me but today's the day i want to say something about it 
I don't know why we. I, it took me so long to get the balls to tell you. Set your own fucking alarm. <laughs> you know what's worse? She really asserts dominance by setting the alarm on my phone too. So, oh I my to... god, dude, <laughs> bro, I'm glad we're doing this. I'm not uh, saying the, the... I'm like I got like oh this, I got to tell you, but like I I would I would lose my mind if my wife set my like and I have no reason to be up. Like, do you have any reason besides this to be up? Nope. I could be no, I could be no. in a phase of REM right now. That, that's what yeah, I could it's be not doing. like you teach Peloton at 7 a.m. and you have to get your body warmed up or something like that. You're like, look, but I bet she's a winner. So you just got to deal with it. She's probably way bigger of a winner than you are. She definitely is. Yeah, I definitely winners will... wake up at 530 in the morning. That's right. That's right. And then uh, I guess she's trying to make me a winner. I think that's the passive message she's trying to send. <laughs> she's like, you look like you could definitely teach a yoga class. So why don't you go ahead and try that? You should talk to my wife. She'd realize quickly that that the dreams of turning that that, uh, you know, the rock into a gem. They're, they they're gone dude it's not it's not gonna happen we are what we are i'm i'm basically worse than terry the pterodactyl behind you my wife she'll <laughs> poke she'll she'll do what she can and uh <laughs> and i don't bite i just i just sit there and take it i'm like okay i'll wake up that's <laughs> it oh man but i'm super excited to be able to speak with you steve and for all of those listeners that have just clicked on the podcast without looking what uh, it's about or seeing the title uh, this is a comedy advice podcast where we're going to talk a little bit about the special guests that i'm about to announce and then we'll give some random advice to questions that people have sent in or uh from the okay. internet but um joining me today the very special uh, hilarious comedian actor he's been on the league Paul Mart, uh, Paul Blart's mall cop. Paul Blart's two... mall cop. <laughs> I'm as you can see, I Paul still Blart's not woken up. Mall cop. It's like a baby <laughs> mall cop that Paul, a man named Paul Blart, is like. That's my mall cop. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. It, Keep going. I like the introduction so far. It's fantastic. This is a very graceful intro that I have. Um, he's been seen on Comedy Central as well. Everybody, please welcome Steve Ranisizi. Clap, clap, clap. Oh, clap, clap, clap. Even the pterodactyl is clapping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Special caw. There so, you go. Uh, hey, is that all right? Sound effects, dude. This is high budget. <laughs> wow. I don't have a soundboard, but I'm trying to just make all the sounds here. Yeah, so I you liked might it. See that sprinkled through, throughout. But I, I know you and I were just talking about wives and um the relationships that you know we probably i probably shouldn't have and i should probably grow some balls and tell my wife to have her own alarm but um i also was digging through the treasure chest of ron Assisi and um found some that sounded more sexual than i intended it to be <laughs> but i'm like what did you find <laughs> oh boy <laughs> And I found a great, uh, some shining gems. This is not getting better. Um, one of which was on your on your 2013 special, Man Child, where you were talking about ordering a pizza and you were talking yeah. about playing passive aggressive softball and your wife being like, uh, where did you order this from? What, when, when did you do it? And I feel like yeah. you're very strong at just like even now riffing off of my uh, situation with my wife, getting the perspectives of seeing both sides, making things relatable. And then even to the point, one of the parts where I cracked up where you, you were like, I'm 90 percent sure that I ordered the pizza and the other 10 percent is like. Did I call my dad and tell him that I like pizza? And it was just so good being able to show the relatability of the different types of discussions, arguments, or whatever you might call them, with uh, a significant other. And then also the to the point where, and this happens to me a lot, as you can tell, waking up with my wife's alarm, of if you're told something or asked a question so many times, you're like, did I actually do the thing that I said I did? I mean, most of the stuff just comes from things that occur every day in sort of my world and my existence, you know? And and so, you know, something funny happens and then you kind of have a couple things where you, you can, and then you just kind of build upon that. I build moments and I try to expand upon them and kind of go off on tangents here and there. But yeah, for me, um, yeah, like I was saying about your relationship, I, I, I am... I like I like to snark. I like to like I sit there and I judge people silently in my head as I'm as everyone does. And so yeah. 
you know, my wife and I, when we meet new people, new couples, the first thing we do is we talk about the, what they what we think their dynamic is and this and that. So in my mind, I'm like, I do it for other people. I do it for our relationship with us. So I just, and I've talked to people on stage and been doing it for 20 years. So you just kind of get a sense of, and every once in a while, people surprise you, you know, you make some quick, you know, you make snap judgments about how you think relationships are this and that. And sometimes, you know, you get them right, but sometimes people surprise you and it's, uh, it's, it's awesome. Like to me, all different forms of relationships and the little nuances that go into them are always, and have always been interesting to me. Yeah, I, I can definitely see that. And it's really cool to see. I think it was uh, Polly Shore and friends when you were talking about how your wife wanted to spend quality time and just going back to the comment you made about building upon things too. I felt like it was hilarious where you were talking about you did a dual membership with your wife because she wanted to spend quality time at the gym. And yep. then, and she wanted to hold hands with you while you guys were both on the treadmill. Honestly, I will say that's one of those ones where I did be, that did not happen. The quality time conversation happened. Uh, because I just thought like, to me, I can be together and that's like, we're together, but we don't necessarily have to be talking or hanging out. So there was a discussion yeah. about quality time, the hand holding thing. I actually saw another couple do at the gym, which actually repulsed the two of us. But I was like, well, that's gotta be us now because of the quality time thing. So yeah, there are, that's how it works. It's like that you take pieces of things, you see other people, and then you just make them into your own or whatever. So yeah, to me, it's like, that's how moments and bits and sort of and get built they get built like from things in reality that come together in these unbelievable things but yeah discussions of quality time have always been like i'm always i've never i'm always a work in progress there's always scaffolding around me you know i'm not my wife's not saying she's but she's always like there's always reno going on with me it's never like, look, you're doing this great and that, that's great and this is great. It's like there's always something a little bit wrong. So whether it, <clears throat> that's kind of like the, the theme, like in the early years, it was quality time. Then it's like we've got kids now. You've got to be an adult. Now our kids, you know, now our kids are older and you're, you know, here's what's yeah. happened. Like here's now it's like the, the dyna dynamic of our relationship has changed so much that, you know, this is what I'm upset about now. So to me, it's like I'm always going to be fucking up and not good Sit. at certain things so you'll always have stuff to you'll always have stuff to complain about that's the quote from my wife that i have framed right in front of me too you're always yeah. going to be to me i'm like the pterodactyl to her that hasn't learned how to fly yet she's like you've got the wings but you just you haven't learned how long and, have you been married um it's shit almost 10 years 8 years yeah 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 we're 15 yeah. this year so yeah it's congratulations crazy. that's yeah thanks man you, same to you, you. made it <laughs> thank we, you we, thank so you. far so good i mean we're still here we're in our various locations to bitching about our wives so that's good as, as uh, you yes know, as generations have done before us e exactly she's going to be listening to this too and going back and be like stefan you really could have done a better job on the intro there i mean what the fuck <laughs> so uh <laughs> But that's what makes it a better and better podcast. And I was going to ask yeah, you bro. too, do, do, do you have, um, I know the wife, because my wife too, she's like, I have a suggestion for how you can be a little better. And these constant little feedback niblets. Do you, to your wife, suggest uh, these types of things? Or do you overall, you're just like, things are good? Oh, I, yeah. yeah. I'm, I am. Oh, she's way more laid back. She grew up with sisters a great dad who is like you know always there for them but like didn't like not over affectionate not a con not a big hugger not a big like uh man of many words it's like not you know i love you probably came like on your birthday not that you didn't feel loved but it just wasn't spoken whereas in my family we all have verbal diarrhea so every emotion you just you like i hate every <laughs> You know, we're half Irish, half Italian. Everything's being thrown out as either you are. You, you know how people feel in my family because everyone either was angry or elated to the point where they couldn't let hold it in. So very bipolar. That's basically what it was. And she's very <laughs> even keeled. So um, I am more of the person that's like the tinkerer in our relationship where I'll be like, hey, you know, we'll be at dinner. And, and like we rare, rarely get date nights, but like sometimes I'll I'll be like. 
I won't have a list of things I want to talk about, but I'll have some like subjects. You know, a skeleton up stuff. outline. Yeah. Yes. Like exactly the way I go to the stage. There's not like we don't have like our fucking this is step one. This is step two. This is step three. But like yeah. we have a, a path that like we could take. And there's a roundabout over there that we know about. Like I, I've got some ideas. So and always it, you got to you got to like you can't just be like all like one subject. It's got to be like, hey, I, this is a social thing I want to talk about. I want to see what you're thinking about this. Here's something about the kids. Right. And then there's always like a here's a way that we can maybe get better at as each other, you know, like in my view. And it's always the part of the date or whatever, or the time alone, the fucking quality time that it becomes, you know, a bit like, oh, fuck, you know, she'll be like, why are we can't we just, you know, and you're like, well, well what, are we, what like we're not using this like quality time for what I, you know, when when are we supposed to do that part? Right. So I used to right. I used to go to therapy, but then it's like she yeah. hates therapy. <laughs> She's much more of the man in the relationship. Like I again, like I would come with like fucking boom, boom, boom. I've had these arguments in my head. You know, like I shower argue. You, ever, you guys do shower argue. I've gotten divorced in the yes. shower like three times in my life already. Where I've been like, you know, you're like, fuck you. We were talking to no one. You're like, dude, it's over, okay? It's over. And you and you're like. So like what? I'm like no, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Love you, babe. Love you. Yeah, oh, just you're like you're having those like inner monologues that just come out. But uh, yeah, it's um, yeah. It, to, yeah. I mean, I am much more of a um, an emotional wreck. So be you know than she is. So she's not she's not coming to me with like. But I mean, when she does come to me with stuff that she's upset about, it's right. On, it's usually like. It's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it's always dumb stuff. Where I'm like, you're upset about that? Like, what? We got way bigger fish to fry than that. <laughs> like, come on. Give me a break. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Does she bring yeah. it up uh, at, during quality time as well? Or is that just I intermittently throughout the day? No. No. And by the way, and what, like whenever like I would come up with that, going back to what was it, like that thing of uh, what? Well, you know, maybe I'll bring up something the way she's always, like she's never like, oh, I, she's always got something to pile on that. She, you know, she's got like it's not like she's like, well, I have no bitches at all. So I, I don't know what what I could possibly be. You know, she's got plenty of stuff she wants to, you know, throw in. But it just it's it's at the point where you'd rather just have a nice date night. Right. You know, let's not eat. Let's just, I could see it like the pot starting to, to simmer up too high. And so it's like, all right, let's just forget it. Let's move on to another subject. Um, the key is now where you got to have a good topic to go to after that. So it doesn't get too fucking weird and ruin the whole night. So um, oh. I'm getting smarter in my old age. These are, I mean, these are great tips, Steve. I love this. I, uh, my, my wife yeah, and I, I'm like we the have ghost our date of Christmas future here. For you, yeah. <laughs> I feel, yeah, I feel. I'm also Italian and uh, and Irish, and my family also. Uh, we wore our hearts on our sleeve. Definitely a lot of verbal diarrhea. It was, uh, you know, very happy, very sad, very bipolar ish. Yeah. So, and my wife complains a lot of, about a lot of dumb shit too. So I feel this is very. No, I'm kidding. She, it's all valid, and I love her, and she's amazing. But no, this is all. This is all great. I wasn't expecting such early marriage advice, but I feel uh, sorry, dude. You brought it up. No, no, and this is this is great. I feel uh, maybe another fifteen years uh, worth of marriage, happy marriage. There you go. I got to do some more inner monologues in the shower. I think in the car is where I release my my anger or have those conversations. But I haven't been able to drive because I work from home now. So, oh, really? Is, See, uh, the thing about the driving is that either a you look like a well, I mean, there's always a the phone call thing now you can throw it. If you look like a lunatic, if you're actually getting in a real heated, pointed conversation with someone and people can see, mm -hmm. or they think you're mad at someone on the road and then you could accidentally get shot and nobody wants, you know, like, because people are shooting people now. Oh, yeah. I live in Arizona. Shit. Everyone's got a fucking holster on their car to just pull out their pistol. And, and yeah, uh, I was uh, just did a, a little, I drove to Boston uh, two days ago with my buddy yeah. and we were talking he was like flip he's like i don't want to 
you get like someone cut us off. I'm like, I don't, I don't fuck around anymore. I don't flip anyone off. I just take it and I go because I'm like, I'm not getting shot. I'm at the age where it's like, I, I, I just don't want to get shot on the fucking highway because I lost my temper one too many times. So I, I try to holster it as much as I can now. Yeah, that's that's very good. Going back to the point of, you look like a crazy person in the the shower. It's like usually you're you know you got your real private time. So that's when you can let it all go. Plus, it sounds so good, and the water drowns it out. So the tears, at least. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's true. I was thinking about it. I sound good when I sing in the shower. So if I argue in the shower, I'm sure it's going to sound yeah. nice. The acoustics of it just make it sound great. And drowning the tears, obviously, it just blends in with the rest of the cleanse. So yep, fantastic. All right. Well, um, we're going to go and get into some advice. And uh, I have some questions here that we can answer okay. together, Steve. Before we do that, um, I like to get us nice and inspired with an inspirational quote. Um, when I'm a quote guy, when I'm feeling down, when uh, I- I'm waking up at 525 in the morning, I usually need an inspirational quote to get me up. Now, Steve, are you an inspirational quote guy? Do you have any inspirational quotes that... No, I mean, it's all sport. You know, we play to win the game. You know, it's always like the, any quotes I do. It's like it's a disgruntled coaches. So, <laughs> it's all like, yeah, got like you know, playoffs. Like that's that's the, those are the, like the mantras I live by. Just do it. You know, like that's it. Like, yeah, Very I'm nice. not looking for for Eastern philosophy on. Although some of it is, you know, I don't really say I I do meditation. I do. Oh, okay. Yeah, I almost said tantric, but that's not it. Um, <laughs> it's like, dang, okay, more tips for marriage. Yeah. This is great. Yeah, uh, no, I do. Uh, yeah, uh, the twice a day, the fifteen minute um, transcendental. So, and they give you a little, not a mantra, but they give you like a little thing that you can say to kind of get you into it. So that's just, but it doesn't. I don't doesn't make me doesn't fuel my day. What's your what? I want to hear this. Uh, the quote. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll dish it up for you. I got to plate it first. This is a quote, not by any person either. It's not Eastern nor Western. I think it's central in the mainframes because it's a robot. It's called Inspirobot. So what it does is it reaches into the texts of perhaps disgruntled coaches and uh, the Torah, anywhere else. And it just uses AI to mash those words together for an inspirational quote. Hmm. Okay. All right. So I'll go ahead and read this quote, Steve. You can tell me what it means to you. All right. So this week, Inspirabot says, wake up and smell the marijuana. Did you smell it? Was that a whiff? I, br- I Yeah, that's awesome. I, 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 I think feel it's, better. I, yeah, I think it's kind of like uh, Inspirabot saying, wake and bake in fancier terms get up get high and go get going right yeah i I feel who wants to smell roses anymore i mean what does that really do for you nothing not really i don't mean i don't even roses like my 15th favorite flower (laughs) what i do have uh, the rose bowl (laughs) i have a hat that's the rose bowl but i you know this hat i'm a fan of the rose bowl so but oh very nice not so yeah. so it's a misrepresentation of you being a fan of, of my love for roses rose. yeah yeah okay that's kind of a mix rose bowl might sound like a strain of marijuana too so you put the rose in the bowl and then you smoke it so that might be extreme euphoria can we have a sidebar here so to talk about annoying things so right now i'm getting please I, I, she, i'm getting in, incessant texts Okay, from my wife because she's at okay. our new house that we're oh, moving okay. into, and we were there earlier. Put the Sono speakers on Howard Stern. We were listening to it, and then I uh-huh. left without turning them off. And she does not know how to turn them off, so she's there right now, and she wants to. And I told her I'm doing a podcast, and she incessantly will not stop texting. And so <laughs> it's every. She goes, "Turn Howard off." It's everywhere in the house. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> cleaning people are here. Oh my God, he's talking about dildos, Ronnie's dildos. Please turn it off. Please, God, Jesus, God. Over and, and just one after the next, after the next. I'm going to call her and put it on speaker. 
and I'm going to tell her how to how to. <laughs> Boom. Right to the voice. <laughs> so how am I supposed to fix this now? How am I? You tell me. Stefan, how in the fuck am I supposed to fix this? I th- is your no. wife like this with the text messaging? Like she only wants to text. I go, I, I like to call. I, I, I want I sometimes things are just call people, call people things. Oh my god. I, I agree like, with you 100 You know what? And now I'm glad this is all on, on video because at least we will have fun. When she says, like, you weren't there, you didn't try to I tried to call. No, you didn't. Okay. There, there it is. Anyway. Um, now she gets ignored and uh, let's help out your your fans. I don't want to. I, I certainly don't want to glob up all the time here. I'm... Oh, my God. Can you believe this? She's calling oh, me. She now. Comes. Oh, please, okay, please, please. Go ahead. Hey, you're on speakerphone on a podcast. What what I, I understand the, the that that it's on. Right. Yeah. How do you turn it off your phone? I can't turn it off on my phone from here. I'm not in the Wi-Fi. Uh, you just go to Wi-Fi. Just go to Sonos on your phone. You'll see the thing in there, and then you can turn it off. Or just go to the my office room and unplug the the Sonos speakers that are in the uh, in the uh, in the closet. Okay. Is it bad? Uh, yeah. And like, why is it still connected though? Isn't that weird? Like, why my Sonos is not going to disconnect it? My Sonos is not even on or programmed to the cell. I don't know, dude. My Sonos, <laughs> your Sonos, <laughs> we'll figure it out. I love you. I got to go. Bye-bye. She just hung <laughs> up on me. She hung up before I could even say it. Um, anyway, that's what I, that's that's us. My Sonos, I, you your know, Sonos. I, I was going to say it was a very terse goodbye for on your end where you were like, I, I love you, goodbye. You got the love you in there, so I thought it was acceptable. But then the, the yep. fact that she hung up on you before you said that was remarkable. Yep, that's us. <laughs> Fifteen years. <laughs> um, all right, let's help some people, right? All right, let's help some people. <clears throat> okay, so this first question it was nabbed from Reddit and the advice column. It says, "How do you approach a random girl you find attractive without coming off as creepy?" I'm trying to get back into the dating game after a difficult breakup, and now that I'm in college, it's very different talking to girls, which is kind of natural in high school, and now in college. Everyone is so standoffish. My point is, what's a good way to talk to a girl you like, but without coming off as a creep or a weirdo, because that's the last thing I want to do, and I don't want to make anyone feel uncomfortable. So, Steve, by the way, when did you meet your girlfriend slash wife? Well, my girlfriend, I I don't talk about her because my wife would get upset, (laughs) but my my wife I I met in college. Um. And, you know, it was, uh, I, I thought, you know, I met my wife because we were both doing plays and I thought she was cute. And so that, you know, that was just like a thing we, we were hung, hanging out together. I didn't really ever nice. remember like approaching her or anything like that, but I do, I do have two sons. So this is sort of an interesting way. I think about it. Like I've got to raise them to be good people and to be, you know, obviously super respectful, but also, you know, like if they're interested how to do thing, you know, I'm not going to teach him how to hit on a chick, but it's like, <laughs> you gotta, you know, no, no, no one wants to hear from their dad, dad, teach me how to, you know, but it's like, I want to make sure that they, they are, you know, good people as well. So I, yeah, fair, creepy. Fair, I, fair. I don't know. I, I fair. haven't done it in a long time, but I feel like, um, Whatever, if you had a good thing in in high school, if you could talk to people, just you know, go up, talk. Hey, what's up? How are you? You know, blah blah blah. And college is different because I feel like more people hook up on apps now than you know. Obviously, there wasn't even around when I was in college, but so oh, I think point. that I I just think the art of talking to people is kind of uh, rusty. So everyone needs a little bit of a refresher. Everyone's going to be nervous. You could make a joke. You know, so that that's how I always filled it with a little bit of just sarcasm, humor, self-deprecation. Go from there. Um, yeah, but just, uh, you know, no, like, don't pull like. Like the Rocky Balboa. Remember when Rocky like put his arm up and like wouldn't let Adrian leave the room? He's like, no, nah, no, nah, you can hang out for a little longer. Like, that's like, you know, like there's a there's a world between that and like, you know, just being a total cuck. 
<laughs> that's that's very true. That's how my wife got me. Actually, I was like, "Can I leave?" And she's like, no, "Yeah." No, he's, no. She's like, "No, dude. Longer. No, you hang out longer. <laughs> You're good. You're gonna wake up early with me for the rest of your life. That's how it's gonna be." <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty. And and I I do like the fact that you also are aware that your boys are getting older and to that age. Yeah, where they're gonna start communicating with women and take interest in them. I just thought of, and, and I think that that's for lack of a better word cute that you're you're trying to get them to be chivalrous or at least just not creepy which is great yeah you don't want to yes you want respectful creepy uh i mean we want respectful respectful not <laughs> creepy um understanding boundaries you know understanding what obviously the difference between you know consent is like a fucking huge thing uh, you know so you right, want right. you want to make sure that there are obvious you know like there are 10 poles that they understand and know about. Uh, but everything yeah. else, it's like, you know, it's sort of a, a you got to find your own way and what makes you comfortable, what makes you, maybe you're not an outgoing person. Maybe you just, you're a counter puncher and you're just, you have to have a friend that kind of can get you going or, you know, can talk to people for you. So everyone's a little different, nice. but yeah, as far as like being creepy, I will say the only thing that my initial like that that letter was a little wordy and a little uh, long. So maybe if you have like verbal diarrhea, that could that could come off as a little creepy. So I'm not saying like mm. self monitor yourself and don't get in your head and get self conscious, but like just uh, yeah, and also do it probably. <laughs> ne don't do it hammered. Oh, you can't yeah, do it like call. I understand call. if you want to have like a drink to kind of loosen you up a little bit, but like you got to be lucid. You got to be clear of what you want to, you know, don't be sloppy. Don't be a mess. Don't wait for that. Do it like that's you want to avoid creepy. That's the easiest way to fucking creep town, I think. Yeah, um, I, I agree. You know? No, no, I agree. Creep town. One hundred percent right there. Population, everyone that's hammered. And let I me tell like you, as a former mayor of creep town. <laughs> You don't want to. It's not a place you want to hang for too long. That's very, you, true. you know, that's it, it dude. You've got to get out of it. Yeah, that that uneasiness starts to creep in on you. So it's a very, very creepy place is creep town. Oh, yeah. I've seen that's, some oh. creepy shit, dude. Creepy shit. Yeah. I, I grew up at the comedy store in the 2000s. <laughs> so some, yeah, real creepy shit. Uh, yeah, anyway, that's like downtown uh, creep town right there. Oh, yeah. God. Well. Well, I feel like that was some really good uh, wisdom that you imparted on this kind of semi-creepy, um, hopefully aspiring not to be creepy person so we can move on to the next question. Good luck, dude. I hope that guy does well. Yes, agreed. Agreed. All right. This last question, uh, also okay. on Reddit, it says, I, I have a severe problem with betrayal in movies and books. How do I get over it? Lots and Whoa. lots of movies slash shows. Did something happen? Oh, was it just the title? No, 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 I was just really listening. Just yeah, 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 yeah. I was like. Yeah, I was like, betrayal? Okay, I'm like, it's okay. All right, go ahead. <laughs> I thought I heard Howard Stern coming in on the Sono, so I wasn't sure. No, 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 no. That was, was yeah, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Um, lots and lots of movies slash shows slash books slash anime have betrayal. This main character being betrayed by their friend slash brother slash father, whatever. The moment I notice or even suspect a betrayal coming up, I immediately drop it. Just as suspicion is enough to bother me. I can't handle betrayal. If somehow I don't see it coming and keep reading slash watching when the betrayal happens, it deeply upsets me. I have dropped several good books slash shows due to this. I just cannot handle it. It makes me severely irritated slash upset for several hours or even days if I was really into the book. There are so many good things that I want to watch, but I can't read past the betrayal. I have bookmarked a lot of stuff that I dropped due to the betrayal, thinking that I can come back to it later when I'm calmer, but I can never do it. Is there any way to deal with it? Who's this by? Mark Zuckerberg after that whistleblower came out the other day? <laughs> what? This guy has a serious, like, this guy is probably into the Bible, dude. No, I don't want to know anyone as, as, uh, has such a visceral reaction to betrayal as this guy. Like, basically, betrayal is, is the, the plot or subplot in, in every unbelievable great drama. Most great comedies have a little bit of betrayal. So it's like, what are you watching? What sort of entertainment do you have now? You can't even watch the the peanuts. 
Because lose, she pulls the the, the fucking the, the football away from uh, Charlie Brown every single oh. time. Oh yes, yes, that Lucy or Judas That's is betrayal. It, I call every her. single is it? I don't know which one it is. Lucy is it? I don't know. She pulls the fucking football every time. That's so it's right. like from early early on was did it bother you then like it's just a weird sort of i get it there are things that you don't but that's a big one that's a big spice not to be able to handle um that's because, true that is very, very true like what sort of love dramas and stuff it's like this betrayal in every sort of aspect uh now you know there is you know there are places you don't want it but it's going to be everywhere but you know people i've betrayed people and they will to go for the like the continuation of time, but I mean, to be able to have yeah. such a, a dead reaction to it. I don't know. Um, I would say, uh, you need to check with a therapist. Like this is beyond, this is beyond our pay grade. I think this yeah, person this probably needs some sort of, yeah. I mean, it's probably something be. that happened in their personal life that they just got cheated on or something like that. Or, mm. you know, friendship yeah. broke up and something else happened, but I agree. It's got, Yeah. Uh, you, uh, you, you know, should I, be able to handle it a little bit better than than this person seems to be able to do. That yeah, that's what I was thinking, and it, thought just came up too. Maybe you have such disdain for betrayal and you loathe it because you just haven't tried it, and so maybe you should get a taste of betrayal by being on the betrayer's side. Be the Judas. Be the Brutus. Be the betrayer that um, you may have deep down always wanted to be. And you'll see that it's kind of fun. And so that way you get to see the other side of the coin and you might start to relish these betrayal scenes a little bit more and enjoy and finish your books. I, I agree because to him, it's like science fiction. He doesn't even know what he's reading. It's like, if you've never done it, then you don't know what it's like to. to so you're like, oh, I, I, I don't understand this. This is like a different language to me. So if he, he's, he's got to go out and you know do something wickedly horrible to another person that trusts him. So, yeah. <laughs> and then he'll get, and then he'll get a t sweet taste of what that feels like. And then he'll these books and all these stories and dramas that he's cutting out of his life because of this. One thing now they'll be gone. It'll be just I think that's a great idea. I I love. Let's it. make you a know, bad. If, let's if you, make a good person into a bad person. I, that's really what this podcast is all about: just making people <laughs> a little bit worse, <laughs> leaving the world just a little bit worse than uh, than it was when we had it. So, by the way, I, I feel like that's a great note to end the podcast on. So, first off, Steve, thank you so much for joining. Oh, no and worries. It was a, it was a pleasure speaking to you. Anyway, I didn't even get to talk about, uh, I know you've probably talked about it uh, ad nauseum, but The League was one of my favorite shows when I was in college, actually. Taught me oh, how to be less creepy. You, yeah. yeah. Even though I yes. guess I kind of dressed like Andre today, but um, <laughs> it was... It, it was such a good show. And I, I also I remember just the, the pure vocabulary that I learned from that and um, how you guys were able to... Um, uh, create these words for these situations that also have happened to everybody. I remember uh, I was rewatching a couple episodes and the sex stain when a man and a woman love each other very much and leave a little puddle. I believe there were a lot of there's a juice, the brine, which uh, Jeff the body called it, which made me gag a little bit. <laughs> and I can see from your face that you <laughs> didn't love that. But the um, brine was, I know, there was some cringeworthy moments on that show. Ha. <laughs> <sighs> The... <laughs> I hadn't uh, thought about that, the Brian in a long time. God <laughs> Almighty! And I'm I'm about to I got I got a new smoker for for uh so I'm about to smoke some meat this weekend. I'm telling like oh I have to brine a uh, a corned beef and I'm like <laughs> God <laughs> damn oh All right. my God and then uh, the the chode juggler amongst mm -hmm. amongst many other things were there well i just wanted to ask what was your favorite or were there any that did not make it in that you thought would have been great to? Add? no the one the one that we were all sort of the creator was baba man we were all like a little bit like uh we were like she was trying to figure that one out a little bit but we sold it and then um and but fear boner for me was the one 
that I was like, oh, no, I, I completely understand this one. This one makes complete sense to me. And uh, this is going to be real, real funny. So and I, I I could see this happening. And I, I, I have friends that this has probably happened to. So I'm glad we did that one. Yeah, we had a lot of different you know, anticipation. We had a lot of different <laughs> terms and yes. we added some stuff to the, to the American, you know, uh, language. So I'm, I'm happy that we, you know, we had a, a little stamp on society for a while. No, it was fantastic. I have two brothers myself and we were all, we're all around the same age. So we would be shit sipping and shit serving and uh, we'd use <laughs> we'd use that vocabulary for sure and i mean it it definitely the show went out with a bang with um i think it was ruxin losing to the coin um mm -hmm. he, larry david came in as future ruxin to tell him uh you know what would happen if he divulged the secret of pete's baby well megan and pete's baby to yeah. andre and uh you I, I believe your character kevin he got his his testicles snipped off even after the bet where he won and your wife was gonna <laughs> get, yep. get um i don't even know yep, what the term her was tubes tied. Her yeah yeah her tubes tied um yep. did did you guys have alternate endings that you thought about i think it ended with a bang literally because rafi ended up banging his yeah, uh, we did, did a we did a couple of different things and we we all we all knew how it was going to kind of end up um but we didn't know at the beginning of the season so uh as we went along we kind of figured it out and so i i, I was happy with the way it, i was happy that we ended on like you said like on a high note i feel like people really still love the show it wasn't yeah. like a thing where it really just trailed off so to me i was like these things are tough to write the endings are always tough to write they're you know people always go crazy and you know want to criticize so the last episodes are always tough to write but i feel like we we you know we went out with a real high note real bang so it was awesome yeah yeah it was truly a legendary show and i still my brothers and i will still quote it or or talk about marathon what so you know just there you just go random shit like that thank you so, very much yeah it was fantastic and um anyway it was also fantastic to speak with you thank you so much i know that you've got dates in phoenix the 15th and 16th at cb live w what else yep. have you got going on where can people follow you what would you like to plug uh social media at steve ren is easy on instagram that's the one i do i don't really do i don't do twitter at all i mean i got an account but i don't i haven't been on it like a couple years so uh that and then Steve Ren is easy .com for tour dates. Yeah, I'll be in uh, Phoenix at uh, uh, Stand Up Live for one night Thursday, two shows on Friday and Saturday at Copper Blues um, nice. in Scottsdale, I think that is. And then, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. and then the following week, I'm in Appleton, Wisconsin, um, Grand Rapids, Michigan, a couple weeks after that. So, yeah, Steve Ren is easy .com for tour dates. Awesome. And guess yeah. what? You guys are like, how the hell do I spell that? It's going to be in the show notes. So you can just take your little thumb and uh, oh, right bingo. There and you'll be able there to you go. It. Thank you. Perfect. And that was the episode with Steve Ranazizi. Thank you guys so much for listening. You guys have been awesome listeners. I was watching you over there and you were doing so good. You drove really well. You almost hit that one guy, but you didn't. And that's what counts, right? So I think you should just keep living your life how you're doing it and don't take advice from nobody. But since I'm offering some advice, I would advise you to subscribe, hit that review button, leave me a review, subscribe on YouTube if you haven't and you want to watch me, although maybe not while driving. Although you know what, live your life. If you want to do that, you can do that. And see me live at the House of Comedy on October 19th and November 9th. Link is going to be in the show notes as well as Steve's shows. That's, that's going to be in the show notes as well. So you can click there. You can buy tickets, go see him live. Guys, thank you. Really, uh, a very big and juicy thank you. And a big gooch smooch to all. Thank you so much. Mwah!